So I have um, the ability to sort of take things that would have been separate variables and bundle them together. So let's say we are writing a program that sort of keeps track of race information about our, our racing yetis and kind of keeps track of their names and how well they've done and what their weights are. I could, in main, I could have these variables like string yeti name, double yeti weight, double yeti time, and I could maintain these as separate variables. Um, and that's fine if I have one of these guys, but what if I have like a thousand of them to keep track of? Um, and I could do that using parallel arrays, and I'm gonna show you in class an example that uses that. Um, but I can also use this, this thing called a struct, which is short for structure, and lets me bundle related information together into a, sort of like a, a combined type. Um, and then I can use that type name and the, the separate variables will kind of travel along together if I store them in an array or something. Um, and they will all be associated with a single variable. So let me show you how this looks. Um, I do it under using namespace, but above main. And it always starts with the word struct. And then I choose the name for the type that I'm creating. So I'm literally making my own type, just like string is a type or int or double is a type. I'm choosing my own type name. So if I'm storing information about Yetis, let's make this type Yeti. Um, and I've got some curly brackets and this whole thing ends with a semicolon. And then what I do inside these curlies is I list out the individual pieces that I would like to bundle together in this type. So let's give this guy a name, um, a weight, and a uh, time. And then when I go to declare one of these guys, instead of doing this as three separate pieces, now literally my type is Yeti, and then I choose a variable name, so let's just call this Y1, okay? The way that I access the individual fields is to put the variable name and then hit a dot, and then I can get to any of these fields. So let's call this Yeti Bob, and let's call, uh, say its weight is 333 pounds, and then let's say its time is uh, 20 seconds, 20.5 seconds. So I can access the individual pieces of this, um, this structure by using a dot, and then I just grab the little interior name that's in here. And these guys are all bundled underneath this variable name. Now, an interesting thing about this is, like I said, these travel together. So if I were to make a second Yeti, um, and I wanted to sort of just copy all that information in, I could just say this. And I wouldn't have to say like y2.name equals y1.name, y2.weight equals y1.weight, y2.time equals y1.time. It automatically copies all the fields. Just to prove that to you, oops, let me just print these out real quick. run this thing so you can see that it has in fact copied all the information over so now what yeti 1 and yeti 2 both have names bob weights 333 and times 20.5 so these fields will travel together in a bundled way now imagine i have an array that's full of 1000 yetis all their information is bundled in each element of that array and if i like swap them around or sort them by something um, all that information will travel together and i'll show you an example where that is made use of um, in class um, there's one other thing you can do with this. Let me get rid of all this business. And there's this extra thing you can add to the struct to make it so that you don't have to do um, this assignment individually. You can make a thing inside of the struct called a constructor, and here's the format of it. It's literally the name of the type that you chose again, and then it's a special kind of function, essentially. It lets us give these guys starting values. So I need to specify parameters. So I'm going to send it a string so that I can set the name, a double so I can set the weight, and another double so I can set the time. And then in the function, what I'm doing is setting the actual bundled variables equal to whatever my parameters are. What that lets me do is here, instead of doing this separately, I can literally pass it these things um, and not have to do it on three separate lines. Um, 20.5. Let's get rid of all 
this business. And let's just verify that it worked. There they are, Bob 333 20.5. So I can set it like this. Um, I can also make a, an array and set these values to start. I want to show you what that looks like. It looks kind of like this. Let's call this Yeti and we'll call it list of Yetis. And um, I show that it's an array with square brackets. And then, you know, I put these curly brackets and I can straight up set values. But now I actually have three values for each Yeti to set. And so the way that I do that is I say, I'm making a Yeti. This guy's Bob, 333, 20.5. And then I put a comma. And if I want a second Yeti, I say, okay, I'm making a Yeti. This one's um, Angela. And she's 222, oops, and 19.2. So now I've got these two Yetis. Let me get rid of this old guy. And if I want to get to them, let's say I want to see the second Yetis. Uh, name that's in position one. Let me just show you that this works. So we should get Angela on the screen. There it is, Angela. So I can real quickly set these guys up if they're in an array or something. And that is how a struct is made, and it's pretty useful.